Zagara. I love Zagara. Hey, she's just, she's just part of the Zerg wave, man. <laughs> That's actually right, too. <laughs> she can add more... She can add more bane links. Look, I played a I played a game of Brood War this morning, and even though I uh, I killed 22 drones with one DT, still died to the Ultras in the end. The swarm is real; it's powerful, man. <laughs> and it's in here is the storm as well. People are banded though in the battleground. So Miracle is going to have first ban here. This is the map pick of Mighty on Sky Temple. Remember, Moggy's false set something that you cannot really ignore here, and I do feel Mighty will prioritize the false set over the Dahaka in terms of globals going to this very first map. Both Malfurion and false set is 100% ban rate on this battleground in phase in phase one part two in Korea only. But instead, we see Zeratul ban is instead lots of times, especially against the higher teams. Yeah. When you have a strong Zeratul, his backline pressuring is really powerful. Um, Sand's not the strongest Zeratul by any means, but definitely getting up there, you would say. See if Mighty wants to remove... Uh, I, I feel like you have to remove the Vala here. If you remove the Falstead or the Dahaka, Miracle takes the opposite of the, the either, uh, and then you're lo lost without a global, unless you've got some sort of counter plan in mind. I think Miracle would do well to pick the Falstad over the Malfurion or the Muradin here. And they will do just that. The Muradin is also a strong option because you'll still have the ability to pick up the secondary global. And then you could start the somewhat tank choke because ETC is just not as strong in this meta currently, most believe. Uh, with right. the exception of like Tyrael Fox. But just just in case that Mighty picks the Haka and Falstad, they did take Falstad before. And what a response from Mighty. Nazebo already picked up on Mighty's side. They want this game to be a longer series. They want to consistently have the pokes. And we already saw some Cassius coming out last night from MVP Black. So maybe it's going to be literally poking comp with Nazebo, Spider, and the Qs coming out from Cassia. Definitely could be. I just want to point out again, I pointed this out yesterday, the new tents for the new skin. So you can see this is a kind of one of the tinted um, Dahaka, Mecha Dahaka skins. and. This also means that Nazebo's uh, gingerbread face is not always going to look the same anymore, G-Club. So many different <laughs> options for that. So we see the Muradin and Malfurion coming up here. So what Miracle has done with this draft with the first pick already is to take not only the most consistent global in the game, but take Magi's favorite in the fall stat to prevent the split push. And then their second rotation, yes, they've lost Nazebo, but they have taken top tier support and top tier warrior both away from mighty so they're not putting themselves into a hole in terms of this draft which we talked a lot about yesterday mm -hmm. oh it's scary to actually draft something that's so co combo oriented it gives your opponent options in the banning phase now if you're mighty when you're looking for the second ban it's tough to ban anything against miracle here because it's nothing that is insanely strong against all three of these they're just three top tier heroes in their role and false set of course map specifically that's the meta we're living in right now, and Leeming is banned for safety. I, I would also agree that Leeming was the safest ban coming out from Mighty, because they were still lacking. Uh, they were they could look for resets with Twilight Dream to turn around the team fight, and Falstead uh, could actually go for the Q build to have the burst damage with Leeming, even more burst damage, and even her potential to be so much powerful. So Leeming ban is critical for Mighty, and there's a ETC ban. Now this is another cool thing about first pick is you get the ban in this situation too where, you, where you've already taken away the top tier warrior from your opponent. You take out another one. Uh, this is going to be the ETC ban. It could also serve as a semi-global. And the pairing with Tyrael is still absolutely on the table for Mighty, so they just wanted to completely remove that. And even though we talk about ETC being a lot weaker on this current patch, he's been used quite a bit not only with the Tyrael but also with the new Uther who is something that Mighty will definitely consider picking up if they run a big melee paired with that Dahaka. That's right, and Mighty really thinking a little bit more after the ETC ban, I think. Dahaka plus ETC would have been pretty decent for themselves, but even with Tyrael, they have still need a secondary poking, like Sergeant Hammer, there we go, exactly. They're, they want to have this long game. They just want to have some some, some siege power, push the lanes little bit by little bit, and make sure that Nazebo is safe until 20, and then they want that power spike. So this four-man is going to be insanely powerful too. I mean, I, I think that this is a solid option in terms of secondary damage. You go with the double specialist. It's that pushing power. 
in the four man that Miracle will have to now deal with. Malfurion's going to be helpful, but what will be the more direct answer here with the Zeratul ban? Obviously, that's something they would have liked to have in this situation, but they cannot. Rarely, Miracle used, or if even if Black, they use Artanis to have that swap onto Sergeant Hammer or onto Nazebo. And it's quite rare, but they do bring it for as a Joker card at the very end. Yeah, that's true. And sometimes we have seen situations like this, even without the ETC, the Tyrael Greymane. Not really a map-specific choice that we'd be looking for here, but Greymane has incredible wave clear, can relieve some of that pressure, and also get his incendiary elixir up really quickly in that lane to get the cooldown reduction. So something to consider for sure. It's gonna be Tychus though for the wave clear. Tyrael we knew was likely going to be the solo laner because there's not really any strong option for the four man right now. Tyrael makes sure that against basically anybody, it's gonna be Dahaka almost certainly in this case. It's not gonna be hard pushed because they don't wanna be losing both the top and the bottom lanes. So Tyrael is a really solid choice for the solo lane. More than anything else, I feel he's not a bad hero in terms of team fighting and also the boss control. But this is really a choice for Miracle that's about that top lane before Falstad goes up there, before we have the Falstad split soak and the split pushing. That's right. Falstad is very strong with global, but before seven, before having that, before having that hammering as a talent and not having the enough wave clear, that's when they start rotating. Falstad could be joined with the other teammates before seven. But that's when Tyria will be on top solo. And then after 7, Falstead could be soaking with Dehaka, competing with that global to join into the team fight later on. The last pick here for Mighty is going to be their warrior choice. And I imagine it's going to have to be the Arthas against the Tyrael here. Gonna be Johanna. We talked about yesterday hmm. the rise of Johanna seems to be kind of on the, our radars because of ETC falling out a little bit. But even when banned here, Johanna is the choice right now for Mighty. An interesting one, but it will obviously heavily counter auto attack Falstad and Tychus. So this may be an option for Envy Miracle to take Mage Falstad instead against the Johanna. Still very powerful option as it you know, avoids the blinds. He's still good, and if the blind wears off, obviously the damage will still be there. A solid option. Either way you look at it here for Mighty, as we go into game number one on Sky Temple. Let's jump into it. In blue, MVP Miracle, Honkoto on Muradin, Dami on Tyrael, Sniper on Falstad, Crazy Moving on Tychus, and Darvish on Malfurion. In red, Mighty, Joker on Johanna, Sans on Dehaka, Magi on Sergeant Hammer, Nasang on Kerzim, SDE on Nazebo. Has Rhaegar ever been that cute before? I don't think so. It's the cutest Rhaegar I've ever seen. <laughs> First I saw I thought it was a cat, but then I read it and I was like, oh my god, it is Wolf Rhaegar. All right. Pretty cute. Going and to be a uh, mage, or excuse me, not mage, uh, marksman. Yeah, level attack. one for sniper. So interesting that he would do that in the face of Johanna, but I feel like mm -hmm. it's just so powerful on this map in terms of how much you're going to split soak, how much extra you're going to gain. Um, that it's pretty reasonable, even so. But it does make the Johanna pick a lot stronger in terms of the blind. And it's actually going to be Karazim in the solo lane for now. Mighty actually wants to bring Dahaka down for the extra wave clear. They really want to pressure with the Nazebo and the Sergeant Hammer, even the Dahaka. So this uh, four-man swap for Mighty is going to be really annoying to deal with. Mm -hmm. They had that intended, so they want that false that Dahaka li li line up, and then they want the global rotation to be forced to go up later on, along with Dahaka, to make false that go up along with Dahaka. That's a very smart lane swap coming out from Mighty. Really interesting that they would send the... Oh, Nazebo gets picked here. It looks like... Perhaps caught there by the grenade, but interesting they would send Sergeant Hammer up to the top lane. Feels like Mighty is really struggling to deal with the decision making right now because just simply have been really, uh, what's the word for this, indecisive. <laughs> um, also partially because they lost Nazebo to yeah. clear out some waves. Yeah, just definitely lost a lot of the pressure they could have had and Tyrael won that top lane handily as we saw, which is what Miracle drafted him for. So he's doing really well for them in that uh, regard. And Miracle didn't lose too much in the four-man because of that swap with Hammer going up there late. 
So they're going to contest actually the middle shrine. Tyrael is taking the top shrine completely alone, uncontested. Finally, SDE comes back. Crazy Moving has taken some damage, but they've bought a lot of time here. What they want to do is clear the top temple and rotate in to get the maximum amount of shots they can off of the second in mid. Yeah, even getting the last five shots are worth the try if you can actually get on top of that temple just at the very end. Tongue does miss. Sans trying to contest, but it is it is against ranged. And it's going to be a hard time for the Haka to have that lane still. And with uh, hammer gains at level four, Sniper is going to have a lot of sustain. So it's really annoying to deal with. This Here's the invade I was talking about. They did get it quickly enough and bought enough time to try to secure these last shots. And they're going to engage for it. Nice hammering here right on Damagi. He's super low. Sniper wants to secure the kill. He fails to do so. Zan's actually trying to turn this fight back around as Dami is very low. They will get the pick onto Darvish. There's a blind again, and it looks like Crazy Moving in is in the donut and Falden right after. And blinds did affect somewhat. It was more of a positioning mistake of, of Miracle, and Daga came into the perfect spot to, to zone out the positioning and really forced Miracle to split apart, and Sniper got a little bit greedy to chase after the low low HP I, target. I think you literally hit the nail on the head in terms of what happened there. And sometimes when you are in this situation, and of course solo queuers can learn a lot from this as well, when you're in a situation where you nearly secure a kill, or <laughs> That's at low, always the time. At low uh, death timers, forcing him to hearth is about the same time lost for him to be out of the fight. So you just need to let it go. It's not always worth that extra little bit of EXP. Forcing him to go home and sit in that fountain and heal up is almost just as good. So definitely too greedy there by Sniper. He was nearly on it, ready to get that kill, but nearly is not enough and lost so much DPS in the fight as a result. We already saw some power of Johanna's blind coming out. It seemed like that's that was not enough once Crazy Moving and Falstad can uh, get some talents up when they level up. I don't think the blinds will be enough to block all the auto attack damage out for. Pretty unusual for Hong Kono, by the way, to build into third win. Oh, look at this collapse here on the Magi. Magi will escape, but unusual for Hong Kono specifically to build third win. That's normally something that we see from Sign, actually, in Korea. So it's a more roaming-oriented build where you are very aggressive and you just constantly try to gank and pressure the lanes and you just tank all the damage and then walk away and get your health back so you're ready to gank again another lane, so... More common to see Hong Kono play the perfect storm since he's really good with the storm bolts and just right. look for the later game damage. That's what it usually goes for. But today, today he, as he is basically D solo on the front line, maybe he needs more heals upgraded to his, his trade will, of course, heal him better. He also has the ability for Darvish to innervate him in terms of mana. That's the other reason why you see Perfect Storm is the mana reduction, so you have Stormbolt available more often. So that's kind of the argument there. Is Sniper actually nearly gets sniped himself. Sands in the top lane will ward him away. And it's going to be, for the time being, actually, Control wrestled away from MVP Miracle here by Mighty. So they take this Shrine. Forcing Sniper to go home was actually a really nice move for them as now they have the numbers advantage here when Dahaka decides to burrow in. Looks like actually Dahaka is not going to come in. He spoke too soon. He comes in and gets the hook here onto Darvish, actually. It's going to be a very important first pick here. No more heals for every Miracle. They will be forced to back away. So 2-1 fights here for Mighties. Sans just comes in with a surprise grab. <laughs> Right, very nice blind, blind at the great timing coming out from Johanna. And actually, Tychus went for a relentless soldier at 7 instead of quarterback or anything else. They don't, Mighty does not have the most CCs available, but maybe he's thinking that Tongue connected with Bless, Bless Shield or some other CCs will be scared. Scary as he is basically the only damage other than Falstead available for the team. Absolutely. Well, with this early game going well for Mighty so far, it's kind of a terrifying notion for MVP Miracle because in order to come back in this game, they're not massively behind, but they are significantly. In order to come back, they will have to go to a longer game, which will empower Nazebo. This is a map where he doesn't really normally get to scale up super highly. He got his Widowmakers around six minutes, so 
or that big power spike in damage. Talking Coming about up. power spike. Oh, crazy moving is in danger. Down he goes. Seven sided there for the killing blow. Before you were so rudely interrupted by that gank. <laughs> you had something to say. I, I, I think Miracle had their power spike at 10 because they have engaged and Gust could be used for engage and also to disengage. So they have offense and defense at the same time. When, while if you see onto the mighty side, they actually need a little bit more time to have the entire power spike, especially in Nazebo having that end game power spike. I think this was the chance for Miracle to come back and gain follow, really chase up onto the EXP. And that's exactly the timing when Crazy Moving just lost his path and went to the danger route. Yep, sadly, Sniper here looks to avoid a tongue. Actually, Gusts as he realizes SDE is rotating up. Nasong commits in for the dash, but Sniper will escape. Good reaction there by Sniper and good communication by Miracle to let them to let him know the gank was coming. You know, at first glance, it almost looked like the Gust was unnecessary, but Mighty, the full rotation up. Definitely needed it there. Seven Side's gonna force out the Avatar. Blessed Shield was used to try to secure that kill, sadly, so a lot of resources spent here for Mighty. But both on a longer cooldown than the Avatar. As we have this Temple phase up, Mighty did not get the pick they wanted before it. They're trying to basically win this game off of picks. And, I mean, it's working for the most part. Their rotations have been super sharp today, and it's also Miracle that's getting caught with the rotation. They should have been a little bit more careful when going around, and as maybe like more than, of course, as you can heal back yourself, and if you have your teammates chasing you after, then that's okay. But Honkano to be, uh, not Honkano, Crazy Moving to be alone was a little bit surprising to see. Well, this is going to be the first temple. Actually. Completely controlled here by Mighty, but the thing is, Miracle actually got a ton of shots out of it already. And Sniper has almost completely gotten this one as well, so... I feel like this is a really nice exchange for Miracle, all things considered, down a talent tier. I think that's a very good trade. Dehaka got some shots in the middle temple, and they are trading at the end, but... Mighty still has the upper hand as Miracle did not hit his 13, I think that's the reason why they saw Mighty coming into the bottom temple and they just backed out. Yeah, Miracle's just gonna give it up. I feel like they delayed that for a while as if they wanted to try to collapse to get the extra shots, but they realized very quickly that was not reasonable and backed away. And this is when the split push power of Fall Stat is gonna start to really hit effect. We've already seen it in the top lane. Every time Mighty sends Sans away from the top lane, he is up there to put that heavy pressure on. This time actually really timed, so basically he pre-set up the bruiser cap to go directly to the keep wall without any delay. As you can see here, it's pushing very hard. This is gonna force Sans to be in the top lane to clear. And it's a good thing too for Miracle because they have both Siege Giant caps pushing down the bot lane. I'm amazed by Sans playing on Dehaka, especially today. He's been making pretty good rotations. He's not wasted any time and the brush tucker positions that it comes in during the team fight was pretty good all the time. Yeah, his tongue grabs were pretty good too, you know? He's really been accurate with those. Trying to do his best Yoshi impression tonight. Too much Nintendo. You know me, man. I'm Blizzard first, Nintendo second. What I got. Did recently get that uh, Sony PlayStation. I'm playing oh, a little bit of that. That's right, you're, we're all gamers here. That's right, man. But, uh, Sans is looking like Yoshi, so I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Even with that green color, a little bit more. They need to make a, there needs to be a hero for Dahaka. Maybe like a special event where Rainer rides on the back of him. <laughs> Some StarCraft event. All right, let's go back <laughs> to the game. And Fault is actually getting Giant Killer at 13, I think. That's going to boost up. We just saw the laning. It's it's a, it's giving a little bit more power to Sniper, making it just a little bit easier to snipe. And there's a grab again. Ooh, Sniper has been getting hit by these a lot, actually. Not been super on point with the dodge, but the hooks, the grabs have been really good. So the next temple phase is going to be tough for Miracle down a talent tier to contest, but with the split soak that they have in the top lane and also this mid clear, they may actually hit it just before. Honkoto's positioning, I love seeing moves like this. And with the third win that he built into at level one, it's actually not really that risky for him to stand there as long as he doesn't get chain stunned and misses his um, dwarf toss. So Miracle's actually just gonna split push 
during this temple phase to try to get 16, it looks like. They're gonna get this keep wall. Mighty, upon realizing this, is gonna go for a boss, but Hong Kong has already scouted this out, and the rotation here is quick. I think Mighty sh it probably should have backed off here. Here's the flight down as well. They have Gust. Hong Kong buys so much time. Seven-sided here, though. Does go down. He needs to stay on the point, and he walks off. Sanctification coming in, though. Huge silence. And with all the boss control on the MVP Miracle side, it, you would imagine Mighty would have just let this go, but they win the fight regardless, partially off the back of so much damage going in off that seven-side strike onto Hong Kono there. He had the bravery to stay, but Mighty wins the fight, gets the pick, and they are going to take a massive lead as a result. This will net them a keep at worst-case scenario with this keep wall completely down. I just got chills from SCEs and the Evo there. He had that zombie wall set up right on the left side of the boss, so Miracle could not even engage after the gust. It was very hard for them, and then Johanna, of course, being really not able to get the CC. He was, she was not moved by the gust because of her D, and she was on the boss circle the entire time. What a play by Mighty there. All right, boss now wailing on the core. Miracle needs to burst it down and win this fight. Like Mighty wants more. Mighty very rarely put in situations where they have to make a tough decision like this, but they are going to commit now to this fight. Blessed Shield goes down. Honkono, though, with a third win, will survive to fight Ooh. another day. The boss goes down. Nice gust here from Sniper, pushing them into that core damage as Tyrael has respawned. Tyrael, Tyrael is very low, but they do not have Sync. They do not have anything available to actually go for the all-in chase. They might actually find themselves in the danger zone. Honkato just abusing the fact that he has third wind and really pushing the envelope as far as how much that dwarf can tank. <laughs> so he walks away and heals up. I'm gonna soak now. Like I said, they get keep at worst for Mighty. Could have gotten more had Miracle made any mistakes in that exchange. I feel like Mighty didn't, they pulled the trigger, but they only pulled it halfway and the gun didn't fire on the Nexus there in terms of this metaphor because they committed to the core, but they didn't do it all in. They didn't get the picks that they wanted. I feel like they were a bit timid, which is fine because they didn't get wiped and lose the game, but could have perhaps gotten more. But still, they're very happy with the fact that they walk away a keep up. That's right. They really had the safety guard on their gun. They were really cautious because even losing one of their members could have actually made it core lethal for Mighty Side. So this is a very aggressive move coming out from Dami there, standing alone. They knew the rotation up from the Haka just came up to the lane, so they were going a little bit more aggressive. Very good timing for Miracle. So, you see Miracle is going to take this window to push up for the keep wall again. Looks like Sand is going to get the grab on Hunkano before that, and they back away. It's going to be a bruiser camp take here for Mighty very safely. Both Sands and Joker really showing how to position as tanks. Ooh, even Storm. Ooh, they're going for the steal here, but that's right into Seven Sided. Used for just for safety. I feel like that's a lot of heroics used just for the camp. And Mighty really Sniper dove into a dangerous condition. There's a gust for disengage, but Hakono is alone trying to steal this camp. And Joker on the left side is barely touched on his HP. That was not very coordinated. There was such high risk there for Miracle for very little reward. They ended up not getting the camp, and they used very long cooldown heroics in order to do so, including the Odin and the Sanctification, which now would be amazing for them in a team fight. But Mighty has this pressure on the bot lane. They have you know, very close to level 20. They're going to have 20 over Miracle. They're going to have those Storm Talents. And Miracle doesn't have any tools now in this window before 20 to take a fight. That was the fight they were looking for, but it just felt like it was done on Mighty's terms, on their side of the map and in their better position. So. Just a fight that was going to be tough to win no matter what. And all tools used. Blessed Shield's going to be up in five seconds. Seven-sided already available. I think they need... Miracle definitely need a Sync. They... If not if not with the Sync and Odin at the same time, they, they cannot win the team fight when Mighty has all their heroics, basically all their heroics back by that before that time. And that... That invasion really felt rushed for Miracle. They really wanted to get something done. Dami was standing there alone. Seemed like the communication was a little bit off. It was a little awkward to see too. Yeah, I would I would have to completely agree with you there. It's just you you go in engaging into a boss pit with just jumping over the wall with a sanctification and even with holy ground, it felt like it was too forced. The second that 
Uh, Vitey was there and all able to respond. They probably should have just backed off, but they committed everything because they were worried that oh. uh, Tyrrell would get picked off. Now, Vital Infection is already completed as Naziba just picked the talent. It is it's 175 instead of 150 stacks now. Yep. And look at this double temple here. Miracle needs to deny at least one of these right now, but they are struggling so hard against the Storm Talents, including the Vile Infection you just mentioned. Dahaka can come down at any moment. Miracle's going to try to take this fight 5v4 before Dahaka comes down, but they can't do even that. They don't have 20. Dahaka's going to get the last shots here. Going to be 10 more shots on the temple. So actually, they're on the chase now against MVP Miracle. And look at that push in the bot lane. They will be able to use this triple catapult pressure to actually start taking the boss themselves. Miracle needs to realize this right away because the boss lane is directly to the core with the keep already being destroyed. Miracle cannot allow this boss to be taken. Kano does spot this invasion, but there's no way of stopping this for now. And even when after after third win, they even took Storm, Stone form at 16. That's not the Kano that we usually see. Yeah. He's super passive today. He wants to win. He wants to bring in the heals for the other other members of teammates, which has not been working so well. No level cho 20 actually chosen yet. Uh, looks like they're considering using the upgraded sanctification for the boss fight. That or the hardened shield coming out here for Dami. I like that Mighty did not start the boss. They wanted to make sure they had this area secured before fighting the boss or at least win a team fighter for sanctification to be used away from the boss before trying to go for it because they know the boss control is definitely better for Miracle. So I really respect this decision. But now Miracle has 20. The Mighty, the longer the game goes on, the more powerful, the more tanky SDE will become. So there's no reason to really force a fight here because that bot push is also threatening the keep. You actually saw, you can see on the mini-map, the top push is going to eventually wear down the top keep for Miracle. And the temple phase will hit the keeps directly. So Mighty has all the tools in the game. As long as they trade even on everything, That's they eventually right. win this game. And I think both of the keeps for Miracle, I believe they're somewhat damaged, about one-third for both of the keep. So I think Miracle has to take both instead or just try to have a team fight right here and win the fight. There's, I don't think there's any other way of coming back if they're, they lose even one temple, they're going to lose both keeps. That's going to give even more pressures onto both lanes. So here's the big stun coming in from Hong Kong. They need to take this fight right now. Seven sided actually completely wasted here. Did actually upgrade it to 11 sided. And we're going to see the big gust coming in for the angle now. And Asun comes in immediately for the heal. Holy ground doesn't really connect here. But look at the Odin damage coming out from Crazy Moving. Unfortunately, Dami is the first to fall. Sanctification interrupted there in the middle of the fight. Joker also has indestructible, so she, jo Johanna can go all the way in, take the fatal, fatal damage. As seen here. And every temple shot is atrocious for Miracle. The core is going to be under attack soon. They need the wipe right now. Oh, there's the kill. There's a great silence coming out from Darvish. What a play. Will it be enough, though? Look at all the healing coming out of the spiders for SD. Sniper has to go home as the core is under attack here by three catapults once again. They will lose mid keep, and there's nothing that Miracle could do uh, to stop the pressure that's going to be coming at them from all three lanes. They live in a ticking time bomb now. Because Fallstat is gone, Mighty just can go top to get the temple to finish the game, it looks like. Oh, it's man, so unfortunate for Dami that Sanctification was interrupted. It could have turned the fight around immediately. This would be nice to grab Moggy, though. Ooh, nice juke by Moggy there. Even 11 sided just for the time being. They want to. That song is not done here. Wow. Does he have enough mana to go for the kill? Looks like that's going to be game for matter. sure. <laughs> SCE is stalling some time. There's the ice block. Hong Kong is very low. And that's more than enough shots from the temple straight to core. That's exactly right. There's the pick. On to Darvish. And that will be all she wrote as Dami tries to delay, but cannot even really get into the zone. Maybe one last all Druins into the zombie donut. Nope. Down goes the core as Mighty will secure game number one. When these two faced off against each other, the last time was actually, this map was not played. So, completely different map setup here. I'm gonna give you guys the updates on each.